Welcome to the MPL Live Show, I'm Serene Damaki. Tonight, I'm joined by referees Chris Griffiths-Jones and Katie Patterson. But first, let's take a look at some of the highlights from last weekend's matches. Round 18 began at Seymour Shore Saturday as the Sharks welcomed Bonnie Rig White Eagles. The welcome was a little too warm, however, with the White Eagles scoring first through Zach McKenzie. Eventual 2 0 winners, the White Eagles are definitely looking like the bogeyman team heading into these all important final rounds. Fresh from winning the Waratah Cup the week prior, Akoa Sydney City East were full of confidence heading into the home clash between the Wollongong Wolves. They opened the scoring via Dean Beravescos Screamer. But couldn't hold on thanks mainly to a brace by Peter Simonowski. In our match of the round, Manly travelled to the Linden Sports Centre to duel with the Suns. It is always a fiery encounter when these two teams meet, and Sunday did not disappoint. Chalakian got the visitors ahead in the first oh, half. Lovely ball, McAllister, Chalakian, 1-0. And Tineski finished the job with a goal of the week contender in the second. He's Tineski on the turn, Nikola Tineski. James Andrew might have been the find of the 2017 season. Jimmy the Jet has turned his career around almost as fast as he turns around opposition defence. The speedster scored a blistering hat-trick against a poor Sydney Olympic to give his side a breathing space on top of the ladder. You know who was at it again on Sunday at Sydney United Sports Centre. Paddy Nickass nailing his second halfway goal for the season. Spotting Thomas Hewitt Bell off his line, Nickass didn't seem phased scoring from 45 odd metres out. Sydney United ran out 2 1 winners. Rounding out the weekend matches, Parramatta felt the full frustration of Arby's Waratah Cup loss. The Tigers showed no mercy piling on four goals and Parramatta letting in two own goals themselves. Arby is sending an intimidating reminder to the rest of the competition that they've not lost any competitive edge. A quick look at the table now and leading into the final four rounds we see Blacktown City with one hand on the Premiership with Arpia below them by six points. Only six points separates third and seventh with the Wolves gaining. It will be an interesting battle for the top five and you don't want to miss a minute. That was the round that was. See you next time. First come off the rank, how did you uh, both come about being referees and why? Mm, started when I was 14. I um, was already playing at the time um, and just decided to start for pocket money and really enjoyed it and kept doing it. Pocket money to start? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and why did you keep at it? it other than just enjoying it, was there any other why behind it? Um, just love football um, and I guess I, when I stopped playing I still wanted to be involved in the game and um, really enjoyed the challenge of refereeing so yeah, kept at it. Yeah. What about you Chris? I started by default really, um, so I was playing first grade cricket for Parramatta, I um, wanted to continue that, thought I'd probably make a high level at some point um, but that didn't eventuate but um, I was playing for Arpia Leichhardt and wanted to sort of not get injured for cricket so I just started to to uh, start refereeing. Ah, so injury was a bit of a driver and accidental it sounds. <laughs> yeah. By default component. Yeah. Oh, good one. So what are your most, what, what's your most memorable uh, match that you've, that you've officiated? Uh, it'll have to be, I suppose, the um, the Melbourne Derby semi-final I did a couple of years ago at Etihad Stadium, big match, big crowd, um, high importance. The game went well, which is always good for referee. Um, there was no, no dramas or controversy, so that's probably been the biggest game I've done. And what about you, Katie? Probably my FFA Cup game, round of 16 in 2015, um, with Melbourne Victory. Um, big game for me, there's a lot of hype and anticipation, um, but yeah, it was a fantastic experience, so I'll never forget. Oh, good one, good one. Chris, your uh, Football New South Wales uh, referee manager, leading um, Hyundai A-League and PS4 MPL New South Wales men's referee as well as officiating big a number of big uh, a-league games 
What do you think are key attributes to being a top referee? Um, I'd have to say there's probably three things. One, the fitness to get in the, in the good positions. Uh, anticipation of play to, um, to be closer um, to the to play. And then also when you've made those decisions, um, communication to the players. I think that's pretty important to be able to, to at least talk to them, answer their questions. Um, not necessarily convince them of the right decision, but to, to at least give them some sort of understanding of what we're looking at when we're making decisions. So how are referees assessed? Um, so we're assessed pretty heavily, especially on the A-League. Um, so there'll be a, a match day assessor at the game, analysing every decision, every movement that you make on the field. At the same time, then there's another assessor watching on TV, just in case the, the match day assessor misses it. Obviously the fans, the coaches and whoever else wants to give their joy <laughs> to us as well. But um, similar sort of thing with the Premier League. So we'll have uh, a match day assessor on the majority of the games. Uh, and then also then we get the video review, um, analyse the key match decisions. Do we get them right? Do we get them wrong? What can we do better? Well, on players giving their all and assessing, let's uh, take a look at uh, goal of the week. What do you reckon? Yeah. Here's goal of the week for round 18. Is it for United? Now Koleski. Stavalakis has pinched it. United are away. They have some numbers. Nikas with it. Oh, Nikas is going to try something. Oh, Paddy Nikas. He has done it again. It's stunning from Nikas. What is it about this ground? That man and the spectacular. That is brilliant. And that may just top the lot. He sized it up from just inside. Sydney FC's half and Huard Bell, he can only watch on, take a ticket, grab your seat and applaud. That is special from Nikas. Katie, you, you became one of the first female leaders to, uh, female um, referees rather, to officiate a uh, MPL men's um, uh, match. Tell us about that and what you think that means for future female referees. Yeah, I think it's really exciting. Um, for a long period there, I think there's been a separation between men's and women's football for varying reasons. Um, but from a refereeing perspective, it's all about decision making. Um, and for me, I guess there's no gender distinction around that. What's really important, what Chris said, is around being fit enough to be in the right position um, to be able to make those decisions. But then the decision making component really is up to your knowledge of the games and how you're applying them. Um, so for me, it's a really exciting, um, I guess, point in time where we're starting to see um, those opportunities be made to, to both males and females. Um, and it's really great in terms of development just for me as a referee and, and for, for women um, that are refereeing. Um, men's and women's football are, are two completely different games and you, can, um, you learn so much from refereeing both, um, both versions of the game. Um, so it's been really great that that opportunity has been allowed. Right. What have you learned? What, for you, what are some differentiators in terms of refing a men's match versus mm -hmm. a, a women's, not versus, but in comparison to in or comparison. in contrast to a women's match? Um, I think there's different expectations in terms of how you work with and play, uh, work with the players um, and manage their expectations throughout the game. Um, again, like Chris said, the, there's the fitness and there's knowing the laws, um, but if you're not able to work with the players to help um, you know, articulate the decision that you came to or um, work with them around some of the grey areas of the law as well, then you're not going to be effective um, as a referee. And I think men and women um, both expect something slightly different from you in that regard. Um, so that's probably the, the interesting. Most, um, interesting distinction. Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. Quite, a, And that's quite a breakthrough like, in terms of, of, of doing that and forging the way forward for future mm -hmm. uh, female referees. And to your point, on um, you know the men, the women, the, the training, the physicality. Mm. Uh, referees clock up kilometres almost you know mm. on the pitch almost as much as the the players do. How do you physically prepare for a match? Yeah, it, it's great. Um, over the last I guess probably five or so years, we've built a really strong training group um, within New South Wales and within our national panels um, to help maintain and, and build our fitness. Um, a lot of agility work, um, you need to build your stamina. Um, you need to have, I guess, that um, explosive speed to be able to keep up with play and change in direction. Um, that's really the most important um, type of fitness that we need to be, um, to be building, would you say? Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Um, the, the set routine that we're given now to mm. For training is important, um, 
when I first started in the A-League, we, we never had that. It was just go and do it yourself. Right. But the game has changed and, and the, and the uh, play is getting faster. Uh, and it's demanded of yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you're saying you do it as a group. So you do it as a group of referees. Yeah. Yes. And how often do you, tra- do you, is it a regimented component in terms of you train a certain amount of times a week? Yep. So two to three times as a group. Wow. Um, mm. And then your own training outside of that. Wow. Oh. Um, and then we, particularly in our national panels, um, we submit heart rate data. Um, every week as well um, and then there is I guess the nutritional and mental health component yeah I was going to say the mental side of it as well yeah. right because you take quite an authoritative you've got a little you do take quite an authoritative um, role that you play on on the pitch and during the during the match mm-hmm. and Chris how does one come about being a referee so somebody who's interested in taking up a career as a referee talk us through the process in your experience the qualifications the training yeah so um, anyone can join uh, they just have to, to go online initially and do a, an online uh, exam, which is very simple. It takes about an hour or so to go through, but it just gives you a good understanding of the laws. Uh, within that, you take the certificate that you receive to your local referees branch, who will put you through the final stages in regards to what's a yellow card, red card, signals, that type of thing. Um, but from there, then you've got the opportunity. So the opportunity for the New South Wales Refereeing Development Panel, the Referee Academy, going into the National Talent Pool, National Youth League, wow. uh, and then ultimately the W League and the A League. It's quite a career path. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's a full-time path. It's a full-time yeah. gig. Yeah. yeah. Is there an age, is there a minimum age for which you can start? Yeah, 13. Th- really? We like to Really? Be, yeah. 13? Yeah. Okay, that's that's pretty, that's pretty, well, it's not, I mean, it's young, but not youngish. That's great. What an early way to start and you can go, because that sounds like quite an extensive uh, c- career path in which you can actually pursue, so there are really wonderful development opportunities in that respect. And um, Katie, you're also part of the w, the Westfield, Westfield W League referee panel. Do you think playing football is integral to the role of a referee? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't think it's critical, but I think it is extremely beneficial. Um, in particular, just being able to understand the game um, in a practical sense, understand and be able to read play and see how play is going to move and be able to um, anticipate the way that the ball is likely to move across the field and then obviously make decisions in terms of how you're going to get yourself in the best position to be able to see that that play. Um, I think it's more difficult to do if you um, if you haven't been actively involved in football in a playing sense um, but not impossible. Um, so yeah I think it's appropriate. It's, for an, advantage. it's yeah, an advantage. It's an advantage but not yeah. yeah. And what can you say anyone, Chris you're mentioning, mm-hmm. anyone can actually um, apply or go through the process. Yeah. Are there particular professions or people from a particular field hmm. that you find coming in? So, because it is an authoritative role, so I don't know, policemen or teachers or firemen, somebody that's already in a role of authority? Yeah, so it depends. So teachers think they make the best referees, right. but then coming from a business background, uh, we think that, well, I think that um, selling uh, gives you better skill set, but I think that's debatable. Right. On, on what happens, I think ultimately it comes down to the personality of the individual referee, um, how they can uh, conduct themselves on the field, how can they get their message across, mm-hmm. um, and so on. So I don't necessarily think there's one skill level yeah. that will determine that you're going to be the best. Uh, I think it's just a mixture of a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Well, interestingly, that's a great segue because I was hoping for your help. I'd like to take this opportunity to debunk a few myths, I suppose, refereeing myths. You were saying, you know, teachers, for instance, or maybe not, but not necessarily, and it depends. So if we can keep on that, can you help me out with a few? What mm-hmm. do you reckon? All right. <clears throat> Myth number one, you cop more abuse at a professional game than refing a local park. No. I reckon more abuse at a local park. Well, maybe because the thing, the difference is on online. A, on an A-League game, yeah. Yeah, you can't hear the, the fans. Yeah. They're just a, a murmur. Um, but when you're refereeing at a local game, where I'm from, from Granville, and you've got six people and, and the dog there, then you'll hear those six people yelling. Oh. So it becomes a little bit more personal, I suppose. You can't mute. Like, you, you can't, can't mute, mute it. No. Right. Yeah. And they're very and close to yeah. the field. Okay. <laughs> and... Um, I think, yeah, yeah, you definitely hear a lot more that's happening, but I guess at a professional level, um, there is a lot more replays um, that are occurring of your game as well, okay. and then you get, obviously, the online um, feedback, sure. um, so you're not hearing that during the game, but you definitely cop yeah, more cool. abuse after the game, after the game. through other channels. All right, <laughs> on to myth number two. All referees wanted to play football but weren't good enough. Hmm. Harsh. 
that's so harsh. Um, <laughs> Not true. False. Uh, I guess in some ways it's probably true because if we're good enough, we'll be playing football. Um, Interesting. The, the reality is that, that we weren't, um, but we, we were good at something else. So for me, I look at refereeing as, as an opportunity of, of going out to an A League field, um, which I would never have had that experience or been able to do. So in some ways, maybe that's true. Um, but ultimately, you look at the amount of players that make the top level, and there's very few. Mm. Um, so I reckon okay. that was probably. Uh, some referees were probably a lot better than these players that want to give us a bit of steer. So you say there's a bit of truth in that. Mm. Potentially. And the final one, referees mm. can't support a team. Uh, yeah, well, I don't support a team. Right. Um, I do lower leagues of English football, which is Gillingham um, in League One. But uh, when it comes to the A League, no, because that's where my dad was born. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Now, before I let you go, it yeah. is shout out time, as we so traditionally do here on the MPL Live show. So, if there's anybody you'd like to say hello to or send a message to, or you. Yeah, Aaron Bechtus, one of our biggest supporters in the office of referees, and uh, hopefully one day he'll uh, come back to me with something constructive. <laughs> I'll say hi to our training group. <laughs> Guys, thank you again. An absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for coming in. And uh, yeah, it's great, great to have you with us and enjoy the rest of your evening. No worries. Thank, thank you. you. Let's have a look at the fixtures for round 19. On Saturday, match of the round will be at the Northern Beaches as Manly United hosts Blacktown City 7pm at Cromer Park. Also at 7pm, Hakoa Sydney City East return to the site of their Waratah Cup final win at Lambert Park to take on Sydney FC. On Saturday, 2pm at Albert Butler Memorial Park, we'll see the Wollongong Wolves play the Sutherland Sharks. Rockdale City Suns will host the Bonnie Rig White Eagles 3pm at Illenden Sports Centre. While Parramatta FC take on Sydney United 58, 3pm at Melita Stadium. And the cameras will be on Sydney Olympic and the Apia Leichhardt Tigers 5pm at Belmore Sports Ground as this match will be live streamed to the MPL New South Wales Facebook page. That's it from us tonight. Thank you again to our guests, Chris Griffiths-Jones and Katie Patterson. Thank you for your company. I'm Serene Demacki and I'll catch you next week.